Hi and welcome to Amazing Gaming. I'm Amazing and I am in my supermarket once again for my third episode. The very first episode was an introduction, the second was getting to one billion and as you can see right now I have half a trillion. If you do enjoy this video throw a like on it, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell, do all that good stuff and we're gonna get right into this video. Today's a special day actually in this game. I want to show you some of my tips and tricks on how to earn lots of cash without spending a lot of Robux. I don't have VIP. I haven't unlocked any areas with Robux at all. I have used in-game currency only. Pretty awesome. Alright, so here we are in the central store right now, the place where we do all our purchases. As you can see, there's a lot of areas unlocked. I'm very close to getting a couple more staff members, that's really good. But we're going to start with some tips and tricks and first over here you'll see some very very expensive stands look at how much they cost 26 billion look at this this coffee stand 117.8 billion that is like a quarter of what I have nearly a quarter of the total amount of money I've got for this and the way it works is that the higher value customer you have in your store the higher amount you'll get for sales which is pretty awesome another thing i figured out pretty quickly is that if you just hit the home button it'll take you back to your store instantly it doesn't matter if you're visiting other players if you hit that you can easily get back to your store all right now here is some solid advice let me just go back to the central store see all these big ticket items right here you can actually get these for free now I haven't got this yet, like I haven't actually purchased this yet because I'm about to get this for free. It costs 117 billion, that's an insane amount and I'm going to show you how to get all these big ticket items for free as well. And all you have to do is something that you need to do quite like regularly. Let's just head back to the store here. And it's this guy on the, this side actually, anybody who's on this side of your store you need to do their quest. Let's take a look at this one. I have to sell 6,000 items to get the reward of the coffee machine for free. I've only got to serve another 107 customers. That's it. Once I've done that, I will have that for free. Another trick is to also make sure that you keep these red stands full of trolleys. And another thing that I found as well, it's a little crazy, but Usually, until someone has made the cash sale on a cash register and left the store, another customer will not go in. So the more cash registers you have, the faster your queue will move, providing that there are people in the store to serve. If you go into a situation where you go AFK for a while, and then all of a sudden you've got a bunch of people in your store not getting helped, and then they leave and new customers don't come in to replenish them because there's not enough trolleys you're going to end up in a lull or a slow period where it's going to take ages to clear your queues even if you have trolleys because you need you need to have customers inside to buy things in order for the queue outside to move it's a bit weird like that but that's how it works all right, let's take a look at my store right now. I'm going to be changing this entire layout. Now the whole thing, the whole thing that I have put together so far, I have not done with Robux. This is purely just grind. I could have got this all done on the very first day of play uh, as it was just Carbon Meister and myself were the first two to get videos out on this game and become content partners with the game. Like I could have had all of this and one trillion in the first day if I expanded my areas with Robux and bought staff and bought new items with Robux. But I didn't. So does that make me any less of a pro if I'm doing it without Robux? Or does it make me more resourceful? That is a question. So it's looking pretty good right now. Apart from a few empty shelves, I've got another tip and trick for you. So in your staff menu, you've got staff that cost a lot of money and uh, they obviously have higher like bars of levels of what they can do. So if there's three bars of speed, they will work a little quicker. If there's three bars of a dollar sign, they will earn a better tip. If there's three bars of, you know, the way that's how it works. The more bars, the better they do their job. 
Uh, but here is a little tip for you right now. The one thing that I find is that if you have a staff member that can do too many things, they'll actually end up doing nothing. If you can, make sure all your staff members have a speed buff and then you have dedicated ones that just do shopping carts. So speed buff and shopping cart only. Have a couple of those so that you never run out of shopping carts ready for your customers. Another one is to have a couple of speed buffs with restocking, speed buff only with Q&A and uh, that will actually help stop your staff from loitering and roaming and not doing what they're supposed to which is helping you earn cash. Another thing you want to keep an eye out on is your customer menu. Let's take a look at it right now. Go to your info tab and you will see your customer list and you will see all of the different types of customers and what is their primary like goods type that they want to come in for. What you'll find is for whatever level they are, that is the maximum good type that they can actually purchase. But they can purchase items just under their level a couple of like places. So try to keep your goods together and whatever they do purchase, they will purchase that item plus one or two items below that or they'll cross the supermarket looking for random items. They will do that, but they will never purchase an item above what they can. So especially with the high end goods, keep them all together and you'll find that the one that can purchase the most expensive Bobux game or, you know, Xbox game, they will buy that and the other ones as well and you'll end up with some very expensive purchases at the till exceeding 1 billion once you get to these really big ticket items right here. But I am going to be clearing this entire store layout. I'm going to be changing it as soon as I expand into this last area right here because just behind this wall is an escalator that goes up to the second floor and once I've unlocked it, this is going to have to change. So how am I going to do it? I'm not going to do it right the second because I'm about to get a very expensive and very free item from this quest which is completed. So I'm about to get a $117 billion coffee machine for free. Let's grab it. Okay. Here it is. Coffee machine. Free. It's amazing. So you'll get about five mini tasks over here and then when you level up you will get a big task or two or three tasks over here. One of them will include a big ticket item. You absolutely have to do those quests to get these items so you don't spend money on those. All right, we're about to get a new staff member. Let's quickly help out this chef over here. And uh, let's put this coffee machine stand in. Oh my gosh. We're going to put it like really close to all of this. So we're going to put it on the end here. There we go. We've unlocked the barista. So that is done. Oops, someone wasn't happy. We'll get rid of this shopping cart. Just put it over here. All right, now the bus turns up every once in a while and the bus has everything, like every type of customer that you can get. So when I redo my layout, I am going to be putting the main supermarket over the far side closest to the bus depot and they will be using that door to come in. So over this side, stretching all the way to the back is going to be the main supermarket. So this will be the produce department right here on the entrance and there'll be checkouts at the exit right here. So that'll be ready for all of the bus people. So going all the way through, we'll have everything in order from the info list. So starting at the top, when I redo the supermarket, I'm going to be having milk stands right here by the entrance followed by carrots, apples, pumpkins. So I'm going to be placing everything in order through here and I'm going to be making it so that each end gondola will be a restock, uh, restock section so that everything gets restocked and, and there's nice flow and it goes all the way back through here. This area through the center is going to be the dividing area. It's going to be a little fancier so we're going to have some nice flooring on here nice lighting going all the way through there will be checkouts of course but it will look a lot different and then on this side i'm going to put premium goods so these are the people who come in through the car park different cars denote different types of customers as well so the higher end customers will be driving the fancier cars 
and they will all come in and purchase items from the high-end goods on this side over here and then that is going to be how the layout is going to work so it's going to take a little bit to get that organized that's what i'm going to do a complete restock and a change of everything in here now to the staffing issue okay so quite often you will get staff look at them look at them they're just well there's customers out there too but there's just customers just staff and customers just roaming and doing nothing there's nothing out there for them but they still do it why do they do it well probably because they don't have a task to do or they've got too many tasks and someone picks it up because it's a multitask like restocking versus q a one might have both restocking and q a and another person that has q a and something else is taking that customer so they can't do it so they miss out on opportunity to restock and then you get these red boxes over everything in the store which is like frustrating and then customers leave and you have to put these carts back in the queue well as you can see my carts are no, not a problem because I have a dedicated staff that only do speed buff and shopping carts that's all they do that is their job so anyone with a different job description or anyone that has a shopping cart in their job description should not be in my main store at all doing another task all right so we've got the coffee machines here no one's bought any yet i'm really waiting for that new customer let's take a look and see if we've got any in the queues nope we've got the werewolves they will be hungry for some steak we've got a police officer there who else have we got over here oh we've got these uh chefs <laughs> i don't know what do we call these ones right here look at that face it's like a cletus chef <laughs> A Cletus chef. So he's gonna go grab the knife set first probably or definitely inquire about the knife set even if he doesn't purchase it. Cletus chefs. Look at that. So far I've not seen any of the uh, new ones, the barista girls, but hopefully that won't take too long. For now I'm just gonna do a quick restock and this is just the one thing that I did get was the ability the uh, I think it's called boss super boss manual checkout time reduced by 50% that's me checking it out instead of the staff clerk restock three shelves at once manually that's what I'm doing manually recycle up to five shopping carts that's also what I do very very good little pass to have that one and then I've got super customer increased customer speed by 25% so they work around the store getting things they want to get quicker I don't have VIP, I don't have the start kit, I don't have the cash cow, I don't have the starter pack. Um, boosts, I don't have any boosts. Number of purchase, one, it says, like, I don't have it. It means I could get it if I wanted to. And I haven't bought any cash at all. That is just grind, completely pure grind. So I'm just going to go through and... I mean there are plenty of flaws with this layout mainly that I tried to put them in groups of items rather than groups of value. If you look at the layout of Central Store that is how you should lay out your supermarket. So you have sections for everything and restock shelves close to all of those sections. Yeah let's go back to Central Store actually and take a look at that because that is a really important thing. Yeah, so treat your supermarket like this. Lay it out much nicer than this, but keep all of your first area with all of these items unlocked in order, and then create a second area with these items. And then you've got your like high-end goods for all together right here. And you'll find you'll get a lot more sales of high-end prices if these are all together. So the high-end side, it's going to start with the saxophone and guitars and the flutes and it's going to go all the way up to the TVs, the flat screen TVs which are right here. I have no idea how much these cost, probably trillions, but I will probably earn them for free with a quest because I'm up to date with my quests and you should be too. So that's how that's going to work. Uh, yeah, but right now I'm saving to expand so I can get that top floor and then get my whole bottom layout redone. I'm 
about to get another really super expensively priced item for free just by completing this quest and as you can see I've got some cell phones oh my gosh cell phones a phone stand I'm about to put this in oh and you haven't seen my new layout have you no you have not but I'm about to put this in let's put it right here I have a new customer unlocked oh my gosh I better restock it it's going to be expensive I wonder how much this is going to earn me right there and there so all my high-end products are over this side just quickly restock this okay so a new customer is going to come in I have to find them see where they are oh my gosh look at this queue it could be a while before they get there what about over this side oh I think I think these are it here I think these guys are the ones right here yep these are the guys okay I've got to watch these guys and see what they do and make sure that they their Q&A's are all answered and everything that they buy is in stock because if it's not then they're gonna leave the supermarket I don't want them to leave I want them to buy so come on grab your trolley or shopping cart let's go there's one all right let's follow this one in so this is the normal side of the supermarket oh yep he's crossing over he's coming over oh it's lagging no please don't lag it's insanely laggy it's really laggy okay what's he doing he's buying a skirt he's buying a skirt oh my gosh okay right he's got a skirt oh there's another one here they come here's the cell phones come on buy the cell phones no what are you gonna buy coffee machine coffee machines yes they're worth so much right that's one I'll restock okay and then another all right well they haven't oh wait he's there he's also looking for puzzles oh my gosh all right let's follow these guys oh they're after a jacket a coat gosh are they done come back and buy cell phones now come on no they're not buying cell phones what come on buy cell phones look no they're not buying cell phones how much are they going to spend oh my gosh two billion 2.8 billion Two point eight billion again. Okay, so this guy must have bought the cell phone. He must have. I've got to keep an eye on him. I'll restock everything he visits. All right. Where are you going? Are you gonna buy a melon? What are you gonna buy? All right. He's just. He's done now. He's done. Here we go. 7 billion for the cell phone holy moly that's insane 7 billion for one transaction oh my gosh wow 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 okay so I redid my entire layout I've got amazing customers oh my gosh it is this layout is really working it's really really good nice dividing area so this is the main entrance but it's not being used so much to go up to the second floor then all of the high-end goods are on this side all of the medium goods are on this part and then over here is the general supermarket goods and that stretches all the way to the back where there are toys and things like that so yeah it's pretty good and easy to get to everything you can like literally just walk up to any shelf with a with a stacker behind it and you can easily place down everything okay so the very last tip that I want to share with you right now has to do with the allocation of the car park spaces and their position I'm just gonna quickly start this quick quest all right so if you have the majority of your car parks on the left hand side the customers they're pretty lazy they're just gonna go to the latest or the closest queue to where they actually get out 
So if you want to have a balanced supermarket with better sales and less problems with your shopping carts, try to keep the left hand side with hardly any car parks. So you'll notice I've only got four here and I've got a big gap around it because this is where the bus depot is and the bus is a priority for the very first queue. The customers aren't going to go walking all the way down to the other end to get on there. So you don't want to have too many car park customers and bus customers using this first queue at the very same time. Oh look I've got Brewster bunnies. Yeah they're going to buy coffee machines. Alright so yeah that is really really important. Make sure that you put your car parks further to the right hand side and that you have the staff to manage the trolleys or the shopping carts and the checkouts to get them in and out. That is the best thing that you can do for it. Alright let's take one last look at this entire store. This is the high end goods little mini section here with cell phones, games and then we've got coffee machines. We've got nice lighting and here we've got sporting and musical equipment all the way through here. Over the side we've got apparel, uh, accessories, cooking utensils, medicines behind the cash register and some globes. We've got hot foods through the center. Then we've got all of the regular produce. We've got all chilled down one side right here. All of the fresh produce through the center. We've got frozen things here on the edge as well. They're all color coded. Some chips on the side. All our meats in one area with a restock canned goods here. We've got confectionery, puzzles and games and toys all through the back. And that is the layout that is working very well for the supermarket right here. It's doing incredibly well. As you can see, I've hit the 1 trillion mark more so actually. I've beaten it by quite a bit and I'm already getting really good value customers. And I leveled up. Well, wow, good timing. Got a cash bonus. Awesome. So yeah, that is a really good way to end out this episode, I think. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to throw a like on it. Don't forget to subscribe. If you're not already, please hit the bell so you get notified when I release videos. And please subscribe. A lot of you aren't subscribed. I'd like you to be able to just, you know, see my content regularly as it comes up. That would be really good. And we'll catch you again next time for Amazing Gaming. Goodbye.